All right, we move from Jacksonville, but stay in the SEC and head to Lexington, Mr. Brooks, where the Tennessee Vols, coming off a loss to Alabama, will face Kentucky, coming off an open date. Tennessee is a three-and-a-half-point favorite, continuing our theme of road favorites this week. How are we feeling? Um, I am not feeling great. If you're a big blue backer like myself, um, Big Orange historically has dominated this matchup, and Mark Stoops has not been the best exiting the bye week the last few years, and that's exactly what's happening here. So, yes, Kentucky is a home dog. Um, it was three, three and a half, whatever it is. Um, it's just they are overseeing probably if Arkansas was not in the picture, the most disappointing passing offense in the conference. And even though Tennessee themselves had some – expectations with big arm Joe Milton. They themselves at least have an identity with their run game and defense playing a little bit better. Last two weeks uh, before the bye, Kentucky, they've just gone sideways. And even though they shipwrecked Florida, they themselves have been marooned in terms of producing points. So, yeah, I don't feel great about this matchup whatsoever, Andy. And now that, you know, the time change is about to happen for this week, um, I just feel the Cats are going to be dominated with the bright lights of ESPN shining. (laughs) It, I was at this game last year, and and granted, this was it was a much better Tennessee game, but it was it was the worst I had seen Kentucky play, and I don't in not in the Stoops era because he had to take over, he had a lot of work to do when he took over for Joker Phillips, but in the latter day Stoops era, it was the worst I had seen Kentucky play. What about twenty twenty at Alabama? Well, there's that. Yeah, like, I mean, I got a lot of time nothing. That, time nothing that happened in 2020 counts, though. <laughs> let's 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 remember that. That's true. So, JT Daniels Mirage, or was it? Because like now he's starting to turn it on at Rice. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, granted, yeah, that is definitely an asterisk type of season, 100. Yeah, t- last year showing from the get go, Tennessee just had full throttle. Kentucky, they had one good offensive series. You think of Chris Rodriguez hitting a power play to the left, scoring on an explosive touchdown. But after that, all volunteers, Will Levis, just, yeah. That was one of the games where people were like, okay, this guy's not it. (laughs) We got some really interesting lines. It is a week of road favorites, sometimes big road favorites. And you know that's always dangerous, especially the later you get in the season. These lines... Brought to you by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Staples and sign up. First $5 bet, you get $200 in guaranteed bonus bets. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You can play basically anything where they have a ball, a racket, you name it. The NBA season starts this week. A lot going on there. There's always action to be found at FanDuel. And there's a ton of action in college football this week. Some very interesting lines couple interesting totals. Unfortunately, no Iowa total this week because they are off. FanDuel's probably okay with that because that one that one feels like a free square almost. That that one that one is is hit six times in eight games so far. So I think that they're probably happy that there's gonna be a little more variability in these other ones. So fanduel.com slash staples bet five two hundred dollars in guaranteed bonus bets. So talk talk to me about Devin Leary because it does seem like he's been a different person since, you know, 2021. He was awesome. Yeah. He comes into 2022. NC State's doing a Heisman campaign for him. He gets hurt. It just feels like that that guy from 2021, we have not seen him since. Well, I appreciate this platform because I have been thinking about addressing this. And, you know, because you can't be as nuanced as you would like on Twitter. I'm not going to write a 20 thread breakdown on Leary or write an article on it because please again don't. It's, it's a moving 20, target well, the article's target. fine but not a 20 thread breakdown please um but yeah over the summer when I did my impact breakdowns of like the top 30 quarterbacks returning and the top five in the conference Leary was easily on top, my top of mind because of his accuracy his downfield accuracy and again th- I say this is nuance in terms of being pinpoint perfect on downfield throws so those are attempts over 10 yards downfield you want to guess who's first in the conference? Is it Devin Leary? No, it's Jaden Daniels. But you know who's oh, Jay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Devin Leary. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but it's like he's right there in terms of producing. The thing is, he's been wasting passes. Uncatchables have been a problem. Entering mm. this weekend, second worst uncatchable pass rate overall in the conference, 25%. One out of four have been uncatchable. But it hasn't been all his fault. 
when you're looking at uh, disruption rate, so these are basically non-at-fault completions. So you can think of batted balls, throwaways, drops. 13.3% of Leary's attempts have had that occur this season. In terms of drops, it's 14.8. That is insane to think that one out of seven passes is dropped. And mind you, they're not necessarily inaccurate passes. Of his 28 drops, 21 are on my quote-unquote accurate passes. Perfectly placed passes. So he has mm -hmm. just been killed in terms of being able to find rhythm either it was you know a batted ball like that Florida game is a great example where he himself just could not get out of his own way because he himself is a 6-1 guy he's not big he's not burly he doesn't necessarily scan the field well and when you're not 6-4 and you can see and raise your release point over that you're just a little bit more prone to batted balls and we've seen that play out unfortunately in my impact study that was the case at nc state as well so even though he did have snappy accuracy he was able to get the ball from point a to point b as well as um any returning quarterback it's just his natural stature allowed opponents to consistently make him uncomfortable and get those situations. And when you're an offense like Kentucky right now, they cannot find down-to-down um, -down wins consistently, and you have to lean into that explosive style of play, those biffs hurt a little bit more than if you were fairly good down-to-down -down because once you find yourself on the chains, no one is worse at delivering a success rate in this conference than Devin Leary and Kentucky's passing offense mm. because of not only his – his spray in those instances behind the gun and trying to avoid pockets or uh, avoid pressure, but because his targets themselves cannot haul in and complete catches. And so you're saying if you were playing a defense that had, I don't know, James Pierce Jr. And Tyler Barron coming off the edges, that might be a problem. Yeah. So um, impact rate, I think I mentioned this earlier, somewhere we mm -hmm. define it. So impact rate is a statistic that I wouldn't say I discovered or made up because Newsflash, Andy, all stats are made up. But it's just a way <laughs> to contextualize on a per-snap basis how often a defender can impact the ball game. So we've heard of havoc, right? right? The F yep, yep. Up metrics. It's, it's just how often um, you can get a tackle for a loss or a batted ball. What, what impact rate does, it adds that with defensive stops. So how mm -hmm. often are you able to get a tackle that keeps the defense in an advantageous opportunity? So a successful play is first down. You have to gain 50%, second down 70%, third or fourth 100%, right? You got to convert in those situations. So in that prism, James Pierce Jr., is the number one player in college football producing impactful plays per snap. Over one out of five on average is one of those things. Andy, that is incredibly sexy. I mean, that, that is a game-altering type of ball player. And in this matchup, when you're looking at Kentucky, who is – Below average, allowing pressure around 27, 28% of their dropbacks. It seems that James Pierce is going to have a field day on either Jeremy Flax, Cortland Ford, or Marquise Cox, depending on what uh, bookends Kentucky has out there. But it just seems like it's going to be a great opportunity for Tennessee to consistently keep Kentucky in poor positions behind the chains and put Leary in positions where he might put more boo-boos on the field than he would obviously like to. More boo boos. I think that leads me where I'm going. Those big I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like this matchup anyway. No, I'll take Tennessee to cover, even as a road favorite. And, and uh, another thing, defensively, I almost mentioned because, like, we mentioned how quickly Tennessee started that game two years ago, or last mm -hmm. year. Um, well, the wheelie switch has been a very visible aspect in Tennessee's offense. Of course, they scored their first touchdown on that wheelie switch, um, where a linebacker was matched up with Squirrel Wright. Of course, that is just alarm bells for a quarterback to look forward and try and target that. Well, that basically happened in the last two matchups against Kentucky, each on the first drive, uh, whether it was J.J. Weaver or um, uh, Jamon Davis matched up mm -hmm. in space on the flat once – our guy gets vertical is just resulted in a lot of explosive plays. And I just think this is going to be a match for Joe Milton to find his footing, um, not finish the week as the SEC's least explosive passer, despite that mighty, mighty arm. I think he moves up uh, above some other fellows, but yeah, it's just not a good vibe around the bluegrass. In my opinion, uh, that Missouri game really did take the wind out of the sails, literally changed the start of the second quarter. And of course it was really um, centered around that fake punt that obviously swung the game for all intents and mm -hmm. purposes. But, yeah, like it's just not been a good momentum type of performance ever since Georgia humbled the Wildcats two weeks ago. So even though Tennessee, yeah, they're 
a team in crisis for a little bit. I just think they have a little bit more going for them right now than Kentucky. So a get right for the Vols. Get right. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.